Hello and welcome to Glass Tires 2024 Spring Preview. I am Brandon Zeck. I'm Gabriel Martinez. And we're standing in a, a little hideaway space at the Manil Drawing Institute uh, because we're, well, they're included in the Spring Preview just to give you a little tease. But uh, a reminder about what this Spring Preview is, a lot of times we end up choosing larger institutions. Um, these are not the only shows we're excited about this spring. There's a ton happening. Uh, so make sure and check out the event listings, check out future top fives, all that jazz. But without further ado, uh, we're going to jump into some of the major shows that are going to be hitting Texas institutions this spring. The first pick on our list is the Ruth Asawa show called Through Line, which is actually coming to the Manil Drawing Institute in Houston. It's going to be up from March to July, so you'll have a little bit of time to see it. I was actually very fortunate to see this show at the Whitney Museum of American Art last year in New York. Uh, the Whitney and the Manil are co-organizing it together, and this is the first uh, major exhibition of Ruth Asawa's drawings. So you might know her for her wire sculptures, which you've maybe seen at the Manil or at the Eamon Carter in Fort Worth, but this is a show of works, some of which are on public view for the first time ever. You know, amazing watercolors, ink drawings, uh, prints that she used where she like inked up the side of a fish and pressed it into the paper. Just awesome works, some of which are a little weird in just the right way that give you an insight into what her practice was or where some of her other, maybe more famous work came out of. I'm really excited about this show. I am I look forward to seeing this much of her work together. Uh, I love to see artists process and some of the behind the scenes ideas and sketches. I look forward to spending time with the catalog. It looks amazing. I think as Texans, we're lucky to have this show here and I hope everyone gets a chance to uh, spend some time with it. Our next pick is a show at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth, also on view from March to July. The show's called Surrealism and Us, Caribbean and African Diasporic Artists Since 1940. So this exhibition, uh, it's a big group exhibition featuring over 50 works from the 40s to today. It's organized by uh, Maria Elena Ortiz, who is a new or relatively new curator at the Modern. And this group show is actually kind of her highlighting her curatorial scholarly specialty. I love when curators kind of get to let loose and really dig into a big group show that they're passionate about because it often extends like really interesting pairings. Like there are gonna be well-known artists in this show, but there are also gonna be people that you probably haven't ever heard of. And I bet both works, the ones by well-known artists and the ones by new artists are equally stunning. Many of the artists have shown in Texas are owned by Texas institutions. Uh, Hugh Hayden was at the Blaffer. Carol but, Walker has major pieces in a couple different Texas institutions. Alora and Calcedia, uh, Belki Sayon. Who um, had a, an amazing show at the Station Museum of Art maybe four or five years ago at yeah, this point. 2018. Yeah. Um, it really looks amazing and I, I look forward to seeing and learning new, new work from the Caribbean. Next on our list is Annie Albers in thread and on paper at the Blanton Museum of Art in Austin. It's gonna be up from February through the end of June. Annie Albers is uh, the wife of perhaps the better known uh, Joseph Albers. Um, I feel like this show is kind of coming out of a generation of shows that's been happening over the last five, 10 years of institutions finally reconsidering women artists who were eclipsed by their, their male either counterparts in whatever movement they were a part of or by their male partners. Um, Annie Albers was all about abstraction. She also made a lot of work that was maybe traditionally classified as women's work. So, you know, like her loom will be on view as a part of this show. She made textiles, she made wallpaper. Um, there's a lot of things that I personally don't know about her that I'm excited to learn from this show. I really can't wait to get up close and see her techniques and uh, see this many works collected together. I love her patterns, I love her abstraction. Um, I think weaving is such an interesting art form and it's really getting its uh, uh, focus recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Next is at the Moody Center for the Arts in Houston. It's a show by Haif Karaman. This exhibition, we've actually had a chance to preview it because it opened last weekend. Uh, you saw some of the work. It was still being installed, but the work was there and it looks amazing. Yeah, the, the artwork is uh, fantastic. There's, it's drawing from maybe three or four different series, some large scale paintings, there's drawings. Uh, there is a wall painting that's made from torshi, which is a, a, a dish and it's, it's uh, pickled beets and um, turnips. So she painted with the juice directly onto the wall. Um, there's a, a research uh, room that kind of explains some of her, her processes and her research and techniques. And uh, the works themselves are fantastic. They look amazing. It's really, I, I look forward to spending more time with them. The preview is just a brief intro and I, I can't wait to kind of slowly uh, spend some more time with these wonderful pieces. Well, and this is a really special show for us to be getting. I feel like we haven't seen that much of her work in Texas. Um, the Fort Worth Modern had an, a piece in the Women Painting Women show that they did a few years ago. But um, I remember the first time I ever saw this artist's work, I just, I had never seen anything like it, which that's always a super exciting thing to see something that feels completely new. Um, I think this is gonna kind of be an undersung show of the Houston calendar, and I'm so looking forward to seeing it. Next is a show of work by Sarah C. at the Nasher. Uh, this is going up in February. It'll be up through August, so you have most of summer to see it. This is going to be a show of new installations throughout the Nasher's galleries. So it'll be really interesting. Sarah uh, had a big show at the Guggenheim in New York recently, um, which I can't think of two spaces that are kind of more different, the Guggenheim and the Nasher. So I'll be really interested to see how she tackles this because I mean, it's a new space, it's new work, it's all installation based, and she goes really maximal whenever she does anything. It's going to be one of those shows you have to see in person. I think her work, uh, photographs don't do it justice. And it is really something to behold. I look forward to uh, walking through and, and just uh, encountering the massive installation that uh, you know, she <laughs> undertakes in these pieces and this sort of brand of abstraction that this produces. She was one of my faculty in grad school. She was very generous, very smart. I learned uh, a lot from her and she, uh, She's someone to, um, to see in person. And last but not least on the list is a show by Adan Vallecio called Tiempo Libre at the Rubin Center for the Arts in El Paso. Uh, it's part of the University of Texas at El Paso at UTEP. The show is curated by uh, Laura Augusta, who uh, works for the Rubin Center. It's the first ever uh, solo museum show uh, by this artist. Uh, he's Honduran. Uh, he grew up in Honduras. He still lives and works in Honduras. And I feel like, you know, looking at this work, it seems really interesting. A lot of it is very materials based. He's collecting things uh, from his environment, but then repurposing them in really new and interesting ways. Um, he's considering things that are just a part of like the quotidian daily life. This promises to be a good show. I like his work. I can't wait to see what ends up in the show. I think Central American artists don't get the uh, attention they deserve. There's a lot of great practitioners making work today. And uh, I, I look forward to spending some time in El Paso. And that is it for uh, this year's spring preview. Thank you for checking out the video if you watched all the way through. Uh, thank you to Gabe Martinez, Gabriel Martinez, our new editor in chief for shooting this video with us. Thanks to the Menil, the Menil Drawing Institute as well for hosting us. Um, there's a whole lot happening this spring. Everyone is hitting the ground running. Like we said at the top, there's a ton of other events happening. We'll make sure to tell you about them, but until then, uh, take some time get out into the world and go see some art.